Guys, in this video, I'll talk about five things that I dislike about my 2022 Toyota Tundra. Let's get into it. Now guys, I'll also have a five things that I like about this truck, but we'll talk about the dislikes first, right? Because not everything is perfect. So dislikes number one and two are gonna come in the back of the truck. The first one being my truck is an imposter. It does not have that cool little bump tailgate thing to lower the back of the truck. Now, really, this isn't that big of a deal because you could just open up the tailgate normally, right? But everyone that I've showed this truck to or friends of mine that have seen the truck, they're like, oh, dude, the button, let me press it. Where's your button? I don't know. I don't know where the button's at. SR5s, for some reason, do not have it from Toyota, nor do SRs. It only starts on the limited and up. So I'm not sure why Toyota showed off that cool feature. Hey guys, look at our little thing for the tailgate wars. Check it out. And then they don't put it on the volume selling SR5. No idea. So the second thing I've already mentioned in a previous video, but it's no access to get into the bed. Now with the truck, you access the bed a lot. The tailgate's up, it's fine. Put your foot on the bumper, climb on up, get what you need to. So 99% of the time, that's fine, right? Just put your foot on the bumper, get up. If you really want to, put your feet on the tires. But the kicker is when the tailgate's down. So when the tailgate's down, because Toyota decided to let the bumper flow, which does look good, don't get me wrong, but you have nowhere to put your foot to really get into the truck. Now they do sell a step that you can buy to get into the truck. It's additional, it's like 400 bucks, something like that. But then if that step comes down right here, there's no good handle, no good handle or spot to put your hands to get into the truck really. So honestly, a miss on Toyota's part. I, I will continue to say this and people in that last video, they said, well, John, you knew that you were buying a truck like this. Uh, you knew you wouldn't, yeah, I freaking knew. I get it. I still bought the truck. I still like the truck. But the fact that Toyota made a truck that you can't easily get into the bed to just does not make sense to me at all. I mean, yes, they sell the part. Buy an extra part, I guess, uh, for more profit for them. But there's no step that comes with it. You got to pay for it. So that's dislike number one and number two. Guys, dislike number three is going to come down to the parking sensors up front. For some reason, unless I'm doing it wrong, please let me know. I cannot figure out how to completely disable the parking sensor system. So I do park this truck in my garage sometimes, and I have to pull it up quite a bit to get up into my garage. I turn the parking sensors off. I turn the pre-collision warning stuff off. Literally all the dummy features I try to turn off and the truck still slams on its brakes on its own. When and I get too close to my cabinets, which I need to, to properly park the truck in the garage. The truck slams on its brakes. I have to accelerate a little bit. It slams on its brakes again. It's very, very, very annoying. Those are just super baby things. And this truck has been really, really good. I enjoy driving this truck a lot. Like it's my, it's one, it's probably the favorite vehicle that I have right now to drive and just enjoy. But number four gets into some of the quality stuff. So this truck is made in America. It's made in Texas. It's like one of the most American made trucks. So even though Toyota is a Japanese company, it's a very American made truck. But some of the fit and finishes are not the best. The first one being paint. So I've buffed and polished this truck up good. It's starting to get a lot better. But some of the paint issues that I see are down here like in the door. Don't even know what the heck happened, but I got, I mean, literally I'm, I've been off-roading on rocks, but like this chip here, this is all plastic and it just super thin paint right down to the plastic. These little guards that Toyota does, it's all dirty. It's all filled with dirt. Like this right here on this lower plastic piece, on this lower plastic piece, you could see like the black paint where it's kind of been rubbing because it's too close. So some of the fit and finish things on this truck, and a lot of people know it right now because of the, the shortages that Toyota has, the supply chain issues, and they're still trying to get these trucks out. So they're trying to like avoid a lot of that fit and finish stuff, but it's inevitable, unfortunately. It's a brand new truck. They're still trying to push them out. I mean, even like up here, this isn't, I don't know, the straightest I feel, and that little fairing coming out right there. So I mean, am I being overly picky? Yeah, to an extent, but it is, you know, a, a close to $60,000 truck. 
coming in here where the window is, like the window seal right here, you can literally just push on it. And then you all know my console too. My center console rattles a lot. I've, I've talked about that in a lot of videos and that is getting addressed when I take this truck in for its first like Toyota checkup. But I don't know, there's just a lot of things uh, that kind of make you scratch your head a little bit. A lot of people are having issues here with their weather stripping. So some people it's actually like legit coming up. Well, I guess mine can come up too. Oh crap. Ah, oh, dang it guys. <laughs> but you know, some people's it's really, really coming up or it's super separated. So some of the fit and finish stuff of this truck and just overall quality, like the seat, seat is super comfortable. But if I just lift the seat up a little bit, I can see all the inner workings. I can see it like all the seats frame right there underneath of it. But for the most part, like 90% of it, like super solid. The truck is really solid of a truck. It's very quiet on the road for the most part, aside from, like I said, my center console. But you could just tell that some of the fit and finish quality of this truck obviously like isn't like my 4Runner, right? Because that's made in Japan. It's super tight. Such a great vehicle. That Lexus LX600 that I had the past couple weeks um, or a couple weeks ago, that vehicle was built in Japan. Super freaking solid of a vehicle. So I don't know if it's an American pride thing. I don't know if it's just they're pushing these things out, but... For me, that's super minimal because some people have like bumper gap issues. Uh, I think my 4X4 is crooked, but that would be from the port. Uh, that enjoy the ride dude. I mean, he was ripping his truck and the bed like hit his cab somehow. I mean, I, I don't get it. There's just a lot of things that it took them 15 years almost to develop this truck, right? 07 and now here we are as a 2022 with the last generation and uh it really feels like there's some stuff that uh was missed and just a little bit overlooked and the last dislike guys comes into the engine bay what john you love this new iForce? yes i love this new iForce, but a lot of people are missing out on this awesome tundra even though this is a dislike video the truck's really good but a lot of people are missing out on this nice new platform new technology great looks of the vehicle because of a V6. And I don't know why, but Toyota for their engine options is only this V6 and only this V6 as a hybrid. So two engine options with the iForce and iForce Max for this truck, but the lack of engine options is my fifth dislike. Even though I love this powertrain, like this and the 10 speed transmission, it's awesome. I dislike it for the fact that other people are Die hard V8 enthusiasts. They love that roar. Don't get me wrong. That 5.7 was a great motor. But the fact that that is not able to be offered or some variant of it or the 5.0 from Lexus just kind of rebuilt, just like this one was a little bit inner workings to make it work for a truck platform, like because that engine was from the LS, uh, bits and parts and bits and parts of it. But that that is that is probably my fifth dislike and it's not even really a dislike it's just it just stinks that other people can't or don't want to i mean it's their freaking choice enjoy this truck because it only comes as a v6 now obviously this one gets way better gas mileage than that old 57 right but it's a different gearing ratio different 10 speed transmission so who knows if that 57 if they did some sort of active fuel management but people would complain about that but I'm sure that there was a way to get that engine to at least get two to three more miles per gallon. Now, I know why Toyota does this. I know why they do it because Toyota prides themselves on being super reliable, less is more kind of approach. So if they only have two engines going down the assembly line, they're able to get more of these trucks out. They're able to be more efficient with it and just less variables for something to go wrong, right? But the 5.7, just imagine if this truck had a 5.7 option or the 5.0 from Lexus, but geared more towards a truck. So you get to enjoy all that new tech, but with an older, reliable, naturally aspirated motor. I think that that would be pretty cool. So number five, I do like this power plant, but the lack of an option is kind of an issue. And guys, I will throw a number six bonus at you. The HVAC controls. So 
depending on how you're sitting, you can't really see the HVAC controls that well. I wish that they put that lettering like right here on the outside of it so you could easily see it. But if you're kind of sitting sometimes like in the truck like this, it's hard to see it. Or if the sun, like it is right now, comes glaring in, obviously the camera's picking up it up better. But sometimes when the sun's coming glaring in and I don't really know what each of these buttons are yet because I'm not, you know, totally comfortable with the truck. It, uh, it is definitely hard to see which HVAC control you're actually touching. So that's it, guys. Those are my five dislikes. If you own the truck, let me know down in the comment section what your five dislikes are about your truck. Overall, I like this truck a lot. I know there's going to be those comments, just like there was on the Forerunner video of my dislikes. Well, why'd you buy it, John? Clearly, you didn't listen to the whole video. But if you did... Just know that I really, really like this truck a lot. If you guys are new around here, definitely consider subscribing. Returning subscribers, as always, I appreciate your guys' support, and I will catch you in the next video. All right, see you later.